Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Tuscan bean soup. That's right, I'm gonna show you my take on this comforting cold weather soup. And not only is this soup delicious and nutritious, it's also a proven cure for seasonal affective disorder, which many people, including myself, suffer from this time of year. So if you happen to have a little touch of the winter blues, pay attention. This is gonna fix you right up, all right? So let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of an experiment. You see, I usually start this recipe by dicing my vegetables and then sauteing those in butter and olive oil until soft and golden. But this time I decided I would grind the vegetables first and then saute them, which is why I added my carrot, celery, and onion, as well as a few cloves of garlic into a blender. And then I also added a splash of water to help this process. And then basically my plan was to process this into a puree and then cook that to start the recipe instead of the traditional diced vegetables. So once my aromatic vegetables were processed fairly smooth, I transfer that into a saucepan containing some olive oil, which was set over medium high heat, and I began to saute. Well, actually, that's not accurate. I had to wait for all the water to cook out before it really started sauteing, which took a few minutes. And as usual, I will explain myself in much more detail on the blog post of what I was trying to accomplish here. But like I said, I was just curious on how this would affect a soup. Instead of having hundreds of little pieces of diced vegetable, we'd have literally hundreds of thousands of tiny pieces of vegetable instead. So I kept cooking and stirring, and eventually that moisture evaporated. And right about here, it looked like it was just about to start to actually saute. So I figured I was safe to add my butter, which I did. I also decided to turn the heat down to medium. And then I simply continued to cook, stirring, until I thought it had cooked enough. Which, because we're kind of working with a paste here, was not that easy to tell visually. All right, when you're sauteing the diced veggies, it's kind of easy to see when the onions turn translucent and start to get a little bit golden brown. So instead of relying solely on visual clues, I also waited till they smelled like cooked vegetables, and I may have even snuck a little taste to make sure. And again, let me remind you, this was an experiment. You can certainly just start off by sauteing regular diced veggies, as we usually do, but no matter which way you prep your veggies for this, once we feel like those have cooked long enough, we'll go ahead and add our beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two cans of white kidney beans, also known as cannellini beans, and those have been drained and rinsed. And sure, if you want to use another variety of bean, this recipe works exactly the same. You are, after all, the Dwight Schrute of your musical fruit. And then, of course, we're going to need some liquid, so I'm going to dump in some chicken broth. And then, as usual, we will bring this up to a simmer on high. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we can go ahead and season this up a little bit. So let's toss in some kosher salt, as well as some cayenne and freshly ground black pepper. And I know I usually do put the pepper in first and then the cayenne, but I've actually heard if you change your routines and do things in a different order, it actually helps preserve your memory. And where did I hear that? I can't remember. But anyway, we'll season that up, and I'm also going to sneak in a little bit of fresh herb. I'm going to add a little bit of thyme and rosemary, but not too much. You can easily kill a soup with too much herb, so be careful. And we'll stir that in, and then what's going to happen here as soon as this comes up to a simmer, we will reduce our heat to low, and simmer this for about 15 minutes. All right, one of the advantages of having those veggies ground at the beginning is that this soup is gonna cook really fast. I mean, the beans are already cooked and those pieces of veggie are microscopic. So we'll just let that sit and simmer for about 15 minutes while we move on to what I consider actually the best part of this recipe, the crunchy croutons. So we'll go ahead and add one handful per person of fresh bread cubes to a saute pan where they will be drizzled with copious amounts of olive oil. Okay, we want these things pretty much soaked. We'll also give that a little pinch of salt and pepper. And then all we're gonna do is toast these over medium heat until golden brown and crunchy. And you could use a spoon or a spatula to toss these if you want. But we do have a video where I show you how to flip stuff in a pan like this. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's one of those basic skills every cook should have. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna toast that over medium heat until golden brown. At which point, if you want, and I always do, I like to grate over a little bit of Parmesan and give that a toss and let that toast on for another minute before repeating that process maybe one or two more times. So the Parmesan step here is optional, but beside adding extra flavor, that's also gonna provide a little bit of additional crunchiness. And then once our bread cubes have been toasted successfully and they look something like this, we'll turn off the heat and reserve those until our soup is done. So at this point, our soup has been simmering about 15 minutes and it is now ready to blend. And that step is gonna be super easy if you have one of these immersion blenders. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in and puree this soup very smooth. You can obviously also do this in batches in your blender, but be careful. And once our soup has been blended smooth, we can go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients. 
So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add a splash of cream. And I'm going to use creme fraiche because I have it. But just regular heavy cream will work. But as you know, the creme fraiche just has a little extra flavor. So I'm going to go with that. And once that's been incorporated, I'm going to go ahead and give this a taste and adjust my seasoning if necessary, which it almost always is. So I tossed in some more salt, as well as a little more freshly ground black pepper and cayenne. And we'll stir that in. And then last but not least, I like to finish this soup with a little bit of acidity. And this time I'll be using freshly squeezed lemon juice to accomplish that. But depending on our mood, we could also use vinegar. And we'll go ahead and stir that in. And at this point, once our soup is heated through, it's ready to serve. And of course, give it one last taste test, just to double check. As I mentioned at the beginning, this does cure seasonal affective disorder, but only if it's seasoned properly. And assuming it's tasting just like you want it, we can go ahead and ladle that up into some hot bowls. And then once we serve that up, we'll go ahead and top it with our beautiful golden brown Parmesan croutons, which as I may have mentioned, I think is the best part. And then we'll finish off with some freshly chopped Italian parsley. And that's it. What I'm calling Tuscan bean soup is done. And usually something like this would get an additional drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. But because we soaked our croutons, you really don't need it here. So let me go ahead and grab a spoon and dig right in. And that, my friends, is just a tremendously comforting soup. I mean, just the actual bean soup itself alone is wonderful. But when you add in those crunchy golden brown Parmesan croutons, it really is incredible. And since we were generous with the olive oil when we cooked those, those are going to stay crunchy all the way to the last spoonful. So for me, this is just one of the best cold weather soups ever invented. And of course, because I put the name of a place in the name of the soup, people will be debating how authentic this is. Which is ridiculous, since there really is no such thing as one standard Tuscan bean soup. So this just happens to be my take. But anyway, that's it. Whether you are suffering a little bit from the winter blues, or happy as a clam, which really is an odd saying, but regardless of how you feel, I really do hope you give this delicious soup a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.